When we mention smart footballers, we often refer to their game awareness, their reading of the play, or timing of the football. But this list will be a little different. While the term intelligent footballer may appear to be an oxymoron, contrary to popular belief, not all AFL players conform to the perception that they are simpletons off the field. Obviously, there are differing opinions on what exactly makes a person intelligent. See Howard Gardner's multiple intelligences theory. And judging someone based solely off their ATAR score or tertiary qualifications would be inaccurate. But for every Warwick Kappa that graces the field, there are those that go against the trend of the stereotypical dumb footballer. While researching this video, I was surprised by how many current and former players are quite intelligent people, and there is no doubt I have missed many names, so please feel free to fill me in by leaving a comment. And while we're at it, just a quick reminder that if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel. Recording and editing these videos is time consuming to say the least. I'm Jackson from Off The Play, and here are the most intelligent AFL players. Starting first with former Brisbane Lions player Justin Clark, a man who was forced to retire from the AFL at just 22 due to serious concussion issues. Judging by his future outside of the game, I'd say he made the right decision. Clark is one smart cookie, having recorded an ATAR score of 99.95 you literally cannot score higher than that. Throw on top the fact that he studied aeronautical engineering and earned his pilot's license while still in school. Arguably the most notable academic is former Carlton Ruckman Mike Fitzpatrick. It is not just a figure of speech when Fitzpatrick is introduced as a Rhodes Scholar. Shortly after transferring to Carlton in 1975, Fitzpatrick was offered a prestigious Rhodes Scholarship to study politics, philosophy and economics at Oxford University in London. Fitzpatrick finished his AFL career with 150 games with the Blues and went on to have a strong career in business. He also joined the AFL Commission where he was the chairman for about a decade. While on topic, can anyone please explain the weird Star Wars Death March music they gave him at the 2014 Brownlow? And now to propose a toast. It's a pleasure to welcome the Chairman of the AFL Commission, Mr. Mike Fitzpatrick. Mike. That was bizarre. Former West Coast midfielder Tom Swift was once regarded as the best 16 year old in the country and also was a phenomenal student having recorded an ATAR of 99.85. Swift had an injury plagued career and ultimately retired at the age of 22 to explore career pathways in medicine before switching to the finance sector. Ex Adelaide Crows best and fairest Matthew Liptak, or should I say Dr. Liptak, enjoyed a serviceable career which included over a hundred games and a club best and fairest award. Liptak struggled with injuries in his mid to late twenties and ultimately thought, why am I doing this for? And decided to become an orthopedic surgeon. To win an AFL BNF while studying medicine at the same time seems absolutely crazy to me. Former Fremantle and North Melbourne star Peter Bell was one of many AFL players who successfully graduated from a law degree, as was Nick Holland, Richard Loveridge, Stephen Jurica, Tom Ledger, Chris Dawes, and about 15 others that I've probably missed. Morty Bromberg, who played a handful of seasons with St Kilda in the early 1980s, eventually became a judge. Geelong Premiership star Harry Taylor was an interesting character. He is an avid military buff, a student of history, and made the decision not to nominate for the draft as an 18-year-old in order to concentrate on his university studies as a physiotherapist. Western Bulldogs' former ruck combination of Will Minson and Ben Hudson was perhaps the most intelligent ruck duo of all time. Minson speaks fluent German and studied civil engineering, while Hudson is a qualified physiotherapist. Man, somebody should have told this to Rocket Ede. Um, get Minson off! He's coming off! Man, get, get him back off. off! Get him off! Get him off! Get him off! Get him off. Oh, rocket! Oh. Rocket! We can't hear! To add to that, another young ruckman who was on their list at the time, Ace Cordy, was studying medicine. Reliable Essendon player Sean Wellman retired early and worked as a podiatrist for a while before moving into mortgage broking. John Worsfold graduated from Curtin University in Perth and worked as a pharmacist for a period of time. 
Andy Mackay from Carlton and ex-Ruckman Matthew Clark were qualified vets, while Nick Digan holds a master's degree in psychology. Stefan Martin scored an amazing 99.75 to finish in the top 40 Victorian students for his year. And not only did Luke Ball and Chris Judd have a PhD in football smarts, they were both high achievers in the classroom. Ball scored a 98.8 ATAR while attending Xavier College, while Judd scored 96.2 at Caulfield Grammar. Other footballers who were linked to high tertiary entrance scores were John Giles, Matt DeBoer, Ty Vickery, Brandon Jack, Charlie Gardner, Daniel Jackson, Easton Wood, and again, probably a whole bunch of others that I've missed out on. Let me know in the comments. More recently, the King brothers were the ultimate package of being highly touted up-and-coming sportsmen who were star pupils. Max King recorded an ATAR of 97.8, while his brother Ben scored 96.3. On the other end of the spectrum, a special mention must go to Chris Tarrant. Now this may just be folklore, but it's a great story that I have to share. He was booked in for a three hour exam at his school, but after the 15 minutes reading time had elapsed, he simply wrote on the top of his sheet, Go Pies, and walked out. And that's our list. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like and subscribe to the channel, it would be a great help. Thanks for watching.